For a four-year-old in North Carolina, she is making millions of people do the one thing she can't do, and that's smile. <laughs> so Ruby tends to grimace when she shows off her pearly whites, even after coaching. CNN's Jeannie Mo spoke with Ruby's family and tells us how these smile lessons are coming along. No doing scribble scrabble. Meet four-year-old Ruby, but don't ask her to smile. Your smile is beautiful. Smile. Oh, so beautiful. Ruby Spickler's sister and her sister's boyfriend tried to give Ruby a how to smile tutorial. Now do it with your teeth. No. <laughs> no. Just keep, don't scrunch your nose. Don't do that. Like this. Now unscrunch your nose and actually smile like upwards. The video went viral, causing millions of people to smile, but not Ruby. Like you're happy. <laughs> Ruby's sister says she first noticed what she calls the snarly smile when they took some family pictures. She made this horrible, like, double chin, snarly, smiley face that just did not look like she was happy whatsoever. It's something parents everywhere find adorable. Every kid goes through the Chandler Bing smile. Chandler Bing from Friends trying to smile for engagement photos. Now, Chandler, you want to give us a smile? Okay. <laughs> Ruby's friends and family... No. ...have tried having her say cheese. They've put her in front of a mirror. Only one thing has worked. We tickle her sometimes to get a good smile out of her. <laughs> she may have a hard time smiling on command, but she has perfected the eye roll. And wait till you see her angry scowl. Because you won't listen to my grandma. Ruby can sometimes look like a grimace emoji come to life. The reincarnation of Grumpy Cat, I saw her call. <laughs> yep, that's pretty close. That hits the nail on the head. Look at that piercing scowl. Grumpy Cat became a meme. I had fun once. It was awful. At least no one ever has to tell Ruby, wipe that smile off your face. Turn that frown upside down. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. Wow, that definitely put a smile on my face, Max. That was pretty uh, yeah. funny. The, the Chandler <laughs> Bing one was my favorite because I remember the episode. It's fantastic. So, oh, yes. Good luck, Ruby, and the whole family. I hope the smile lessons go well. Absolutely. Your time right now is 857, and it is 41 degrees outside. All right, if you're gearing up for those spring flowers, it is time to start planting. Oh, what a pick for the garden. That's in our next hour. All right, we're going to start off with a live look out of the Alamo City. You can't see too much. It is 41 degrees. It is rainy here in the Alamo City, but we do have some neighbors who woke up to some snow on the ground. Good morning. It is 9 o'clock. It is Saturday, March 18th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Alyssa Cole joining us stark and early this morning. Oh, oh, yes. You know, it was a chilly morning, but glad to be here in the warm studio. What do you think about snow? Are we are we pro snow, anti snow? Here? A little a little bit of both. You all okay. know I'm from Michigan, so you know I love the snow, but you gotta take it in doses. Right. You know, what about you? I thought the doses of snow were over for the year, Sarah <laughs> Spivey, but they're coming back with a vengeance. Correct. And correct me if I'm wrong, but even snow up north in March is not too common. It happens. It's happening right now across parts of the north. But this is this morning. In Rock Springs, March 18th, it has snowed across the hill country. You can see the snow there uh, just here on uh, this piece of wood and then off across in the background there on elevated surfaces like that mountain cedar tree. Yes, some areas are getting snow in the hill country even right now seeing some of that as well if you have pictures go ahead and scan that qr code you can post it to ksat connect we'd love to show your pictures here's a look at the radar right now you can see where that snowfall is across areas in the hill country we'll go ahead and turn on the radar that's a little bit closer to where that snow is falling. We're starting to see the snow area of snow shrink as temperatures are warming to well above freezing in many areas. But up in northern Real County, out near Rock Springs, we're seeing that snowfall 
Here's the thing. Elsewhere, we're just getting a good cold rain from Del Rio all the way here to San Antonio. If you're worried about travel across parts of the hill country, uh, most of the roads should be totally fine. There are some areas in Edwards County where we're starting to see the road temperature uh, get to freezing, uh, but that's really just south of the highways. So the highways should be totally fine. And honestly, most of the roads should be as well. This is a wet snow that tends to, even though we're seeing some accumulation on the higher elevations, uh, it really isn't all that uh, bad. So just use caution and you want to use caution here in San Antonio too not because we have snow, but because we have areas of rainfall falling right now in San Antonio. This is a cold rain. Uh, we really are not going to see too much in the way of uh, easing up of this rain throughout the day. It's going to be a widespread rainfall, 50 only for the high temperature. And uh, we will see in the afternoon a little bit of a let up of the rainfall. And even early tomorrow, we'll have a few showers as well, 53 for the high tomorrow. Please continue to send in your pictures, not only of the snow up in the hill country, but of your rain gauges too. We've seen more than a quarter of an inch of rain here in, at the airport this morning. We'd love to see some of those pictures. I'll give you a more in-depth look at the radar uh, and talk about what we can expect, when we can expect a warm up in just a few minutes. Alyssa, Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning. Two people in the hospital after a three vehicle crash on the city's west side. All of this according to San Antonio police just after 11 last night, a driver crashed into another vehicle head on. Now the driver of one of the vehicles was pinned. Another car crashed into that vehicle. That person taken to the hospital at last check in serious condition. New this morning, former President Donald Trump said in a social media post that he will be arrested Tuesday. This comes as New York prosecutor is eyeing charges in a case examining hush money paid to women who allege sexual encounters with a former president. The message was posted on his Truth social network early this morning. The former president urged his followers to protest. There has been no public announcement of any time frame for the grand jury's secret work in the case, including any potential vote on whether to indict the former president. A senior Memphis police officer who was on the scene during the arrest of Tyree Nichols was able to retire before he could get fired. That's according to new documents obtained by CNN. That letter came after documents dated a month before Smith's resignation, where he was advised of disciplinary charges against him, including neglect of duty, unauthorized public statements, and compliance with regulations. Smith is alleged to have failed to take command in a Superver in a supervisor role, 29-year-old Nichols was repeatedly punched and kicked by several Memphis police officers during a traffic stop on January 7th. He was hospitalized and died three days later. Some health care officials are concerned about the shortage of a prescription drug used to treat type 2 diabetes. Experts say telehealth and social media are playing a significant role in the high demand for Ozempic. Ozempic holds more than 40 percent of the U.S. market share of drugs that mimic an appetite regulating hormone. Some experts believe the prescription weight loss drug market is also a part of what's driving Ozempic's popularity. The FDA announced a shortage of Ozempic last August, noting supply of the drug will likely be strained through mid-March. Well, if you're struggling with insomnia or just trying to get some more rest, you are not alone. A national survey published by Frontiers in Sleep shows seven in 10 Americans don't get enough sleep. And it's ironic that we're saying this during a morning show. Exactly. ABC's Rena Roy takes a look at ways that you can get that needed shut eye. A lot of Americans are struggling with sleep difficulties now more than ever. As challenging as it is to get the recommended seven hours or more of sleep each night, sleep scientist Dr. Rebecca Robbins says one of the most common complaints is falling asleep at all. The good news is there are really robust clinical trials that support solutions for anyone experiencing those symptoms. And generally speaking, those fall into two categories, pharmacological intervention or behavioral treatments. You might be familiar with treatments such as cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness meditation, but what about hypnosis? Books and movies may have you believing it's a mind control trick. Someone says something to you and now you're going to cluck like a chicken or bark like a dog. The truth is hypnosis cannot make anyone do something they don't want to do. It can't even make someone pick their socks up off the floor if they don't 
don't want to. Hypnotherapist Grace Smith says she uses hypnotherapy to help her clients sleep better. While it might be an unorthodox approach, hypnosis is a relaxation technique similar to meditation. I call hypnotherapy meditation with a goal. With hypnotherapy, you use the power of that relaxed state to reprogram your subconscious mind. So you are putting information in. And we're talking about sleep here, so that would be it's safe to sleep, you sleep easily and effortlessly, you sleep through the night, that type of information. Smith usually recommends about six sessions to achieve your goal. Hypnotherapy is a process of conditioning. Assuming one session and all of your problems will be gone forever is unrealistic. Dr. Robbins says there aren't any severe adverse outcomes to hypnosis, but overall research on hypnotherapy to treat insomnia is limited and needs to be studied further. Someone might feel dizziness or discomfort if they're um, attempting hypnosis for the first time, but uh, certainly important to talk to your health care provider before you start any new routine. If you plan to try hypnotherapy, be sure to find a hypnotherapist that is certified. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, back here at home, Tejano Fest now underway at Market Square. More than 125,000 people expected to come out for the four-day event. It's actually the first time since the pandemic that the event is expected to be at full capacity. Full capacity despite the stormy weather going through the weekend. Organizers say for the most part, the show will go on rain or shine. More than 100 musical acts from across the country set to perform. The fanfare is free for everyone. Taco fanatics, unite if you are a taco lover, just like me, Max, and Sarah here. <laughs> you want to take advantage of the inaugural Taco Fest throughout the weekend. It's starting at 11 this morning until midnight. It's located at Rancho 181 Food Truck in Bar Park. There will be local food trucks, small business vendors, live music, and of course a taco competition. <laughs> the family and pet family or the family and pet friendly event is free and open to the public. You know, I'm a very competitive person, but this is the best competition I've seen. A taco competition. Yes, exactly. Typically you see the hot dog eating oh, competitions. Yeah. And everything but taco sign me up right i might have to venture on over there but for now time <laughs> is about 909 42 degrees today on a brand new episode of texas eats Ooh, david elder on. visits exactly one of the newest spots in san antonio to enjoy delicious mediterranean cuisine is that fried cheese mm. okay <laughs> i'm so hungry this is fantastic all right next <laughs> rj marquez join us live downtown Checking in on some of the St. Patty's Day fun still going on. We have a Green River and a River Parade. And taking a look across the city right now, we're told from meteorologist Sarah, it's snowing over San Antonio, but will it transform into flakes or raindrops? We'll find out later in the newscast. Yesterday, St. Patty's Day, did you celebrate at all? I didn't get a chance to celebrate too much. What about you? No, you were here at work. Uh, we went for a walk. We, we, my girlfriend was wearing green. I, I'm not a green person. Oh, no. You know, pinches. I you're know, not wearing green. I know. I saw y'all's yeah. Facebook post. It looked fantastic. Either way, even though yesterday was St. Patty's Day, the fun is far from over. It is just getting started again downtown here today. RJ has made his way to Market Square to the Riverwalk where he's just been out there looking like he's about to have a good time. RJ, how's it going? <laughs> That's right, Max and Alyssa. There are so many great things going on across the city this weekend. And guess what, guys? I am wearing green today. I was not wearing green yesterday. And yeah, there were some people that were uh, coming after me a little bit uh, for not doing that. But I got the green going on today. And we are out in front of Mad Dogs right now to talk about the St. Patrick's Day celebrations going on here in downtown San Antonio along the Riverwalk. And of course, that includes the San Antonio River going green, guys. This is a tradition that goes back more than 50 years and joining me now to talk a little bit more about this is Maggie Thompson. She is with Visit San Antonio. Thank you very much for being with us, Maggie. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit earlier. You said that this place was packed yesterday and you guys are expecting a lot more fun today. Oh, yesterday when we did the river dying, it was incredibly packed in. Today, weather will get better in the afternoon and we'll re-dye it again. Mad Dog sponsors the river dying at one o'clock. Okay, so I know a lot of people are always so fascinated with 
the dying of the river. So talk a little bit about that process and sort of what goes into it and about sort of the safety measures that you guys take uh, when it comes to the San Antonio River. Sure, we've actually been doing it for 50 years. The color is called emerald green and the mayor proclaimed it the River Shannon this year. We have a proclamation that we do. Uh, it's eco-friendly. It's food grade dye. So it goes all the way up to the state uh, and the river authority takes it to the state to be approved. So totally safe for our fish and turtles and our ducks. Yeah. Some of them may get a little bit green, but it goes away pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we were talking a little bit earlier how you were saying that some of the uh, the, the rain has kind of uh, sort of uh, maybe muddied the waters a little bit and stuff, but we will be seeing that bright green color later on today. So Maggie, so for people that maybe still think Thinking about making their way out here, maybe have not had the chance to make their way out here for St. Patrick's Day celebrations. What are some things that they should know? Well, today we have a parade down on the museum reach. That's at 2 p.m. And then we have our downtown parade at 5. We'll have updates, weather updates. But we, again, we feel like this afternoon will be much prettier. But on our website, the San Antonio Riverwalk. Dot com. There'll be a banner with weather updates. Okay, and then we will talk a little bit more about the schedule here with Maggie coming up in our next half hour. And again, we're going to continue to give you those weather updates as we get to them. So Maggie's going to be hanging out with us here in front of Mad Dogs. Max and Alyssa, back to you guys. All right, RJ, thank you so much. Speaking of the weather updates, yeah. Sarah Spivey, will it be nicer by about 2 o'clock? Rain. Rain will let up. Rain will let up by about two o'clock, but we're still going to have areas of scattered rain and even this afternoon. It's going to be a pretty icky day and cold, but hey, you know what? Go out and enjoy it. There's tons of green on the radar. Uh, we're seeing uh, lots of uh, that light rain. It really isn't just a little bit of a nuisance, but you know what? Things are, um, it, we really need this rain, so we'll take it. We've gotten about 34 hundredths of an inch of rain at, at the airport so far since midnight. As we look a little bit further south toward Calaveras Lake, Elmendorf, Mitchell Lake, we're seeing a little bit more of that rainfall as well. Out near St. Hedwig, Lavernia, Floresville, Poth, even up across the northwest side as well. What we're actually seeing is a bit of melting happening. That's what these uh, brighter bands are. So we've got snow falling all up above us in San Antonio. It's just melting before it hits the surfaces form of rain. And that's what we're picking up here with those brighter bands of yellow. Meanwhile, there are some areas of snowfall across uh, the Edwards County, Real County. This is very impressive for this time of year for us to even see snow whatsoever. You can see out in Rock Springs, Northern Real County, even out in uh, parts of uh, Western Kerr County. And we had a video sent in near Comstock of some snow mixing in with the rain as well. So that's going to be possible, especially north of this line right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. North of this line, there's, there is the potential for a few snowflakes mixing in with the rain, and that does include Bernie as well as Kerrville. But again, generally, this is just some good, healthy rainfall for us. One thing I want to assure you of if you're out in uh, these areas is that road temperatures are okay. We're really not seeing any kind of travel worries or things like that with the snowfall out there. It's been so warm. In fact, a week ago, it was 92. Uh, and yes, a couple days ago it was um, in the 80s. Now as we take a look at road conditions around San Antonio, we are seeing damp roadways out there, so just use a little extra caution. You won't have to worry though about ice on the roads, which is good news. It's 43 degrees. We're seeing winds from the northeast gusting up to about 20 at times. That's attributing to some sort of a wind chill. Wind chill values are in the 30s around San Antonio, so it is cold outside right now. Thankfully though, temperature is well above freezing. By the way, I do not anticipate a freeze this entire weekend, so we're good to go. It will be drab and cold at times, but there's no need to worry about your pet, your plants. There's no need to worry about your pipes. You should make sure your pets have a warm place to stay, though. Uh, temperatures are uh, in the upper 30s in the hill country. As we take a look at our KSAT 12-hour forecast, 45 at noon, 50 uh, in the afternoon. We may see a few peaks of sunshine. Again, notice that rain chance will come down in the afternoon. Uh, just that we saw an abundance of rainfall uh, early this morning. 48 in Del Rio will be the high. 45 in Gonzales, 40, uh, 50 in Catula. And I'm calling this winter's last grasp because it's holding on as we uh, hit uh, 
official spring on Monday, so this is really impressive. We'll have a few morning showers tomorrow, a little bit warmer, but not much. It's still going to be a cold day, 53. And then Monday, again, when spring officially starts, we'll be at 50 for the high. We'll start to see a warm up Wednesday and Thursday. Here's the thing, though, it is going to be humid when the warmth returns, so we'll have warning drizzle every single day. We'll be back right after the break. Talk to me about this dish. Okay, so this is called saganaki. Uh, we use kefalotiri cheese, which is cheese from Greece. It's a mix of goat and cow milk. It really fries and bakes really well. Y'all, this is where it's at. Oh, wow. There you go. That's the no, one. That's the pull. All right, cheers. Mm. Oh, my God. This is absolutely incredible. This has to be the best thing. We don't no. even, but this, we're not even going to try the rest. This is the one. Wow, fried cheese. Max, sign me up anytime. I mean, you can't go <laughs> wrong. That's it. So I love cheese and I love fried that. food. So when you fry the cheese, oh, yeah. I mean, look at that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look Kill at that pool. Goodness. The cheese oh, pool. Oh, man. One out of ten. How are we giving the cheese pool? Uh, a ten. A ten? What My mouth is watering. It's got to be a ten. <laughs> All right. 10 a.m., full Texas Eats. Oh, yes, absolutely. It was, I think we have some Spurs and some sports coming up. Oh, yeah, we got a lot coming up. So, go Spurs, go. To say it came down to the wire would be an understatement. We went to OT. We're going to tell you what happened, how, and who really stepped up. Welcome back. Go Spurs, go. Spurs, Grizzlies. Last night, fourth and final time this season. First quarter, Dylan Brooks deflecting the Spurs pass backcourt, chasing it down with Keldon Johnson, but Keldon gets the ball, takes it on the other track, drains a three right over Brooks, and the Spurs lead 14-13. Keldon talking some smack to Dylan after that. San Antonio making 8 of 14 from distance. They would lead 35-26 after one second quarter. Spurs raining threes. Devin Vassell wide open. Spurs would lead by 15. San Antonio led 69-46 at halftime on the strength of 12-3. So what happens after halftime? We go to the third quarter. Final seconds. Luke Kennard throws up a prayer 37 feet. He nails it. Not a good foreshadow for the rest of the game. They're once down by as many as 29 but trail by 12 there. 93-81 and fourth quarter. Final seconds again. This time Dylan Brooks from downtown. Good. We're tied at 109. Spurs missed a potential game winner. So we're going to overtime. 109 all in OT. Trey Jones steals the ball. Racing back. Lefty bounce pass for Devin Vassell. Regained the lead, 119-117, but Memphis played better in OT, came back from 29 down, beating the Spurs 126 to 120. Well, we've been we've been competitive all year, so you know, we shouldn't have lost that game. We were up 30. We shouldn't have lost. We just gotta learn how to close out a game. I mean, we're up at 11 with like two minutes left. Um, simple communication things and just being able to execute down the stretch is is big. I mean I said it all year, we're a young team, we gotta learn, but that won't hurt. Gotta be a little frustrating, but I gotta say they have played super competitively recently. Shout out to my guy Zach Collins who stepped up at the new starting center position. So next up, Spurs hosting a familiar face, DeJounte Murray and the Atlanta Hawks Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m at the AT&T Center, and we got to talk basketball for a second. Did you do a March Madness bracket? I did not. Okay. <laughs> you got me on that way. How's, how's yours, Licky? Uh, well, like most people, it is, uh, it is busted. But today, Texas, one of my final teams, taking on home favorite Penn State. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, all right. All right. Wishing the best of luck. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, time now, 929, 42 degrees out. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend, 9.32 this morning. There is so much going on in and around San Antonio. So, Alyssa Cole, what are you doing for the rest of the well, day? Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about checking out that Green River downtown. Okay. Yes. It is also green. dyed green for those. <laughs> <laughs> it might normally be green for other people, but it is dyed green this weekend, Sarah Spivey. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It's going to be cold. I'm sorry, Alyssa. This is a picture, not from December, 
not from January, but from today, March 18th, up in Rock Springs. There was snow this morning. There is snow this morning up in parts of the hill country. A weather whiplash for sure, because this time last week, we were in the 90s. By the way, if you are up in the hill country and you're waking up to snow, please scan this QR code. You can actually post your pictures on to KSAC Connect and we can show them on air. But here's a look at the radar right now. You can spot where the snow is, where that blue outline uh, moving through Rock Springs, northern Real County as well. We'll go ahead and turn on the radar that is closer uh, to the snow, a little bit higher resolution. Even in parts of western Kerr County, we have seen in Mountain Homes some snow earlier as well. That's in northern Kerr County. There may be some snowflakes mixing in with the light rain in Kerrville right now. Here's the deal. No impacts from this major impacts on the roads or anything like that. Road temperatures are just fine, especially over the main thoroughfare fares up in the hill country. Otherwise, this is just some good, healthy light rain. Uh, one thing that's fascinating about uh, uh, wintry weather is that there is a part of the atmosphere where this snow is melting and just all falling as rain. So even though it may look like there, that's some heavier rain on the northwest side, this is actually what we call right banding. It's where the snow is melting and becoming rain as it heads toward the surface. So uh, areas uh, in Halotus, Leon Valley, SeaWorld getting some good rain. It's just not all that heavy. Maybe just some uh, light to moderate rain out near St. Hedwig, Lavernia, downtown San Antonio. We're seeing some rain as well near Floresville, Poth. All of us, just about all of us, getting at least a little bit of rain right now. And we won't really see uh, this impact the pollen count too much. Here's a look at the pollen count for the day today. Oak is still high. Molds are moderate and pine and hackberry are low. When you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we are going to be seeing the rain gradually taper off afternoon, but it's still going to be on and off. So it's not going to be a great day for outdoor activities. Stay bundled up. High temperatures struggling to get out of the 40s. 25 degrees colder than average. It's only going to be 50 degrees. We may see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon and a chilly evening. Now the whole weekend won't be a wash coming up. I've got a look at tomorrow's forecast. It'll be cold, but rain chances are a little bit less as well. Alyssa Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police tell us a party came to an abrupt stop after gunfire on the city's west side. One person dead another in critical condition. So this is what we know right now. SAPD tells us that their investigation started just after 2.30 a.m. after someone drove up to a party at this home in the 2300 block of Callahan Road. That's across from Nelson Wolf Stadium. Police say someone in the vehicle started shooting at the house. Two people were shot. One of them pronounced dead at the scene. The other victim shot in the chest, taken to the hospital. Right now, police still investigating, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. We now know the name of the man shot earlier this week by police. According to SAPD, officers shot 41-year-old Paul Ayala during a standoff on Tuesday. This was a scene on South Cross Ranch Road on the southeast side. Police say he had a gun pointed at his head and then pointed it at officers. And that's when they opened fire. He was treated on scene. He's still in police custody. SAPD says Ayala had two outstanding warrants. Well, three San Antonio teenagers in jail this morning after BCSO deputies say they robbed a man at gunpoint at a Circle K on Foster Road. Right now, BCSO is still searching for a last suspect. Investigators tell us that the teens chased the victim down in a stolen vehicle before crashing that vehicle on FM 78 on the city's northeast side. Deputies say a fourth person was involved in the robbery. Right now, they're still looking for that 18 year old. If you have any questions, answers, or information that can help investigators, you're asked to call BCSO, the number on your screen, 210-335-6000. Yeah, a lot of you are familiar with this story. The Texas Supreme Court today knocked down a legal challenge to a ballot initiative that would decriminalize abortion and marijuana in San Antonio. So that means it's up to the voters. In a 6-3 to three opinion, justices said blocking the so-called Justice Charter Amendment from the ballot would be interfering with the May 6th election before it even takes place. KSAT's Dylan Collier broke down the court's decision. You can read more about it right now. Just head over to KSAT.com.
All right, so Alyssa, you talked about a little bit earlier. We have that river parade happening later today. We know yesterday was St. Patty's Day, and obviously the fun doesn't stop. It just started for the weekend, and again, happening downtown San Antonio. RJ, he has been downtown all morning at the Riverwalk, and he's ready to see that river get even more green. RJ. Yeah, that's right, Max and Alyssa. Alyssa, you were mentioning earlier about coming down here. Uh, you will be one of the many thousands that are still expected to come down here to the San Antonio Riverwalk to check out the rest of the St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Of course, the River Parade taking place. We are standing right in front of Mad Dog. So this is kind of the hub for everything that's going to be going on here later today. And joining me again is Maggie Thompson. She's with Visit San Antonio, and she's going to talk to us, obviously, a little bit more about some of the other things that are be happening here. There's going to be vendors and also some artisans. So tell us a little bit more about that, Maggie. Well, thanks, RJ. Yeah, today's still a big day. The weather should be getting better later in the afternoon. We have an artisan show going on on the Riverwalk, which is fabulous. So we have about 50 vendors. We also have two parades, one that starts at 2 o'clock that goes on the Museum Reach down to the Pearl. Mm -hmm. And then our big parade downtown starts at 5. So anywhere on the Riverwalk, it's our Bud Light St. Patrick's River Parade. So any place on the Riverwalk is a great seat. Yeah, and we were talking a little bit about earlier about some of the floats that are part of this. A lot of people are going to be decorated uh -huh. and so a lot of people are going to be dressed up. How cool is that to get to see not only the river turn green, but the floats and also people here just kind of go all out for this celebration. Oh, and we see a lot of folks on the riverbanks beautifully decorated in green. I wore some green too. You have your green, but <laughs> people go green, crazy. Yeah. We put leprechauns on our boat. We have a lot of mascots. I think we have a shrimp. We have a green frog. We have a a lot of fun, a duck. We have so many fun things in the parade today. So it's family friendly. It's free, fun to come down here. It's a great way to spend the day. All right, Maggie. So real quick, one more time, let's tell everyone exactly what times things are going to get started. You mentioned the parade down by the Pearl and then also the big one here in this sort of area. So give us a little bit of more times and what people should expect. Sure. Well, everything is on our website and weather updates if there's a delay, but it's the San Antonio Riverwalk dot com. The, the Pearl, the one to the museum, Jim Reach Pearl starts at 2, and the one downtown starts at 5. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Thanks, really appreciate it. All right, guys. So go ahead and make your way down here to the San Antonio Riverwalk. Again, we are outside of Mad Dogs. This is where it's all happening today. A lot of people celebrated yesterday, probably continuing the celebrations out here for St. Patrick's Day in San Antonio. I'm getting ready to see this river turn green. It should be a lot of fun out here. Max and Alyssa, back to you guys. All right. RJ Marquez, Maggie Thompson, friend of the show. I want to give a shout out to the people kayaking in the background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> RJ's live shot through the cold rain. So congratulations to them. The turnout time is 941, 42 degrees out. It may be wet outside, but after the break, Sarah Costa is taking us back to the Case Hat Garden. Stay with us. Yeah, let's take a quick live look out at the Alamo City. All right, sun's starting to come out. You can see damp roads out there. If anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. But if you do have plans, be safe, drive smart. We'll be back. Good morning and welcome back. So if you've been watching, you know things might be wet outside right now. Some of you watching might even have snow on the ground, but once it all clears up, it'd be a great time to plant the perennial plants in the garden. Sarah Costa is back in the KSAC garden where she is planting a pollinator garden. All right, so she gives us advice on what you should plant if you want your garden to be filled with butterflies. If you want to spruce up your garden with color, always pick plants that can also benefit our pollinators. Without our bees and butterflies, we wouldn't have our essential vegetation needed for food to keep our planet cool. You also want to plant heat and drought tolerant plants. Saws has a great list of these, and most on this list are native and great for pollinators. One of the flowers I picked for our garden is called Greg's Mist Flower. I have these at home. They do wonderful here in San Antonio. Not only are they native, they are heat and drought tolerant, and they bloom for a good part of the year. And here's a little secret. These are like candy to butterflies. If you plant this in your garden, they'll be filled with all kinds of butterflies all year long. 
I also chose tropical milkweed. This is technically not native to San Antonio, but Saws recognizes it as a water saving plant because you don't need to water it a lot. It does great in heat. And also most importantly, it's a source for our monarch butterflies. Look, I know some of you might be saying I should be using native milkweed, not tropical milkweed, but I do plant native milkweed from seed at home and it's very difficult to grow, can be very finicky. So tropical milkweed is a great great plant for the Ksat garden. And I know that there is a little bit of controversy. There was a study done that suggested that tropical milkweed might actually hurt our monarch butterflies. But I spoke with the director of the National Butterfly Center, and she says that there is not enough evidence to actually back that research up. And so the National Butterfly Center actually supports using tropical milkweed as a source for our monarch butterflies. You see all those little yellow dots on the tropical milkweed? Those are aphids. You really don't want them on your milkweed, but you also don't want to use any chemicals or pesticides. So you can just spray them off with a water hose or you can send in nature's defenders. Look at that ladybug. Ladybugs love to eat aphids. Before you plant, it's important to place out your plants before you start digging so you have a good idea of what it's going to look like. So the next step, of course, is to dig your holes. You don't want them too shallow, but you don't also want them too deep. A good way to measure is if you have your one gallon planter, if it fits in there, then that's probably the perfect size for it. Sometimes I use an auger on a drill to speed up the digging process. Lastly, you wanna give your plants a deep watering right before you plant. As they are getting established, you want to water often depending on the heat and the drought. You can touch the soil that's no longer moist. It's time to water. In just a few days after planting, I saw this magical moment. We already have a female monarch. You can see she is laying eggs on the milkweed. It's exactly why we planted milkweed. So our monarchs have a host plant where they can not just feed, but also lay their eggs. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. All right, so normally that would make sense, right? Planting in, in mm -hmm. mid-March, but Sarah Spivey, some people in our area seeing snow today. Yeah. Yes, thankfully the Ksat garden is going to be fine. It's just getting a good drink of water with some of this rain moving in. But I thought I would take this opportunity to show some of y'all's pictures up in the hill country who actually got snow on March 18th. <laughs> Very crazy to see this. This is in Rock Springs. You can see on the porch there's some snowfall. This is another picture in Rock Springs, courtesy of Matt McCone. And uh, this is, you can see the sod that's down there <laughs> getting a little bit of that light snow on it as well in Rock Springs. Another great picture, you can see the accumulation of snow there on that post and on the mountain cedar trees in the background. Another good picture uh, of uh, nice coverage of some of that light dusting of snow. And this is in Mountain Home in northern Kerr County. And you can see a light dusting on the uh, truck of elevated surface there getting some of that. There's where the snow is right now. It's currently working its way through Edwards County uh, and parts of Real County. Now other elsewhere, we're really just seeing some light rain, but I still would not be surprised if we could see some snowflakes mixed in with the rain in Kerrville, Bandera, Comfort, even Bernie as well. Although uh, again, as we warm up, this is all going to transition back to rain, but areas like Rock Springs and Northern uh, Real County have seen definitely a good amount of snow uh, this morning. Very rare to see snow this far in the season, this far south as well. In fact, um, spring officially starts on on Monday and we're already looking at some of the coldest weather we've seen in quite some time since mid February around San Antonio, just seeing some light rain continuing to move northward, uh, eastward rather through the county, pushing east toward uh, Floresville, Kennedy, Cuero, Gonzalez as well. And this is going to be with us for a little while. In fact, even into the afternoon, even though the rain is going to let up, we'll still have some light rain out there. Good news is all of us above freezing. I do not anticipate us to get to freezing over the next several days. It's 43 in San Antonio, 42 in Kerrville. Notice Rock Springs, it's snowing. It's close to freezing there. It can snow even if it's above freezing outside because all of this rain that's above us right now 
is snow. It's just melting as it falls down. Some of those flakes make it through to the surface. 44 in Converse, 43 at the airport. Uh, again, it's breezy too with gusts up to about 20 miles per hour. As we take a look at the future cast for the day today, uh, we're going to see it let up into the afternoon, about 50% coverage around lunch, about 30% coverage later on tonight, and then tonight at 7 p.m. only a stray shower is possible. So when we look at our KSAT 12 hour forecast, struggling to warm up. It's cold. It's some 30 degrees cooler, 20 degrees cooler than average rather, and the high will only be near 50. We'll see partly cloudy skies uh, in some places this afternoon with just peaks of sunshine. 48 in Del Rio, 30, 46 in Eagle Pass though, uh, 54 in Canyon Lake and 54 in Gonzales. As for tomorrow, I think in the morning we'll have a few isolated showers, but the heavier of the rain will be out west toward the border. Otherwise, it's going to be another cloudy and cool day. We'll only see drizzle uh, over the next several days after that small chance for rain tomorrow morning. And then again, looking at the forecast, only 53 tomorrow, only 50 when spring starts on Monday, gradually warming up with increasing humidity. We'll be back in the 80s by Thursday, and we'll be right back after this. Good morning and welcome back. Actor Lance Reddick, known for his roles on The Wire and the John Wick franchise, has passed away at the age of 60 years old. Reddick grew up in Baltimore, wanted to be a musician. At the age of 29, he started studying drama at Yale University. Reddick was a regular on the HBO series Oz before landing the role of Detective Daniels on The Wire. He's in the fourth John Wick film, which is set to be released in theaters next weekend. A representative says Reddick died suddenly Friday morning from natural causes. He survived by his wife, Stephanie, and their two children. Jurassic Park actor Sam Nill says he battled cancer in the last year, but is now cancer free. Nill says he was diagnosed with stage three blood cancer. He was treated with chemotherapy and says he'll continue to be on medication for the rest of his life, but the cancer is in remission. Nill said the past year included some quote dark moments, but it made him more grateful for every day. He's back at work and published his memoir titled, Did I Ever Tell You This? It goes on sale March 21st. Well, back here at home, San Antonio is Military City USA, and it looks like we could become Cybersecurity City USA one day. Now, we've seen momentous upgrades in our cybersecurity career paths and our education systems around Alamo City. Now, one of those education institutions, UTSA. That's why tomorrow on Leading SA, Max Kilger, director of a data analytics program at UTSA, is going to be joining us live. We're going to be talking about a lot of things, from the risk of TikTok for the U.S. government, from the government's issuance of that removal of TikTok, the recent ransomware attack on the U.S. Marshals, and even the expansion of the Data Science Center downtown. Also, all those career opportunities across San Antonio, so you're not going to want to miss it. That interview tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow, 8 a.m. We'll be right back. Just some healthy cold rain around San Antonio. Going to be kind of a gloomy day, but we are still continuing to see some snow across Edwards County, Real counties. Uh, and again, here in San Antonio, it's all going to be cold rain. We'll still have scattered showers in the afternoon. Temperatures struggling to get out of the 40s. But if we can see a couple of peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, we'll get up to 50 degrees. Cool tomorrow, cool on Monday, finally warming up in the middle of the week. Thanks so much for joining us for GMSA. Texas Seat starts right now.